Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have with me my fraternity brother, Bible the Sigma, Florida State University, Manny Mu Epsilon Chapter. I have my, with me Manny Charlemagne. He is a Muay Thai fighter. He has fought in Muay Thai. He has trained in Muay Thai for many, many years. He coaches Muay Thai. Um, I he is he gives you a a fighter perspective. He watches fights differently than typical people watch fights. He watches them in a much more technical fashion. So I welcome you, Manny, on to Combat Corner. Appreciate you, man. We're gonna talk about. Ilya Toporia and Max Holloway. But before we jump in, thank you so much, everyone, for your continu continued support of this channel. We greatly appreciate it. Be, be sure to like, subscribe, and obviously hit that bell so you get all the up to the minute, you know, videos as well as share our content. So we greatly appreciate you. Manny, welcome aboard, my, my man. What's up? What's up? Ilya Toporia, bro. He gets oh, a man. devastating <laughs> knockout of Max Holloway. I will tell you that I. From my perspective, Max Holloway, that was his last chance. You but think yet, so? Max Holloway, I think that was his last at chance. At 145 or 155? At, one, at, at 145. I think Max Holloway should retire. I, that's my you, I think What? Okay, let's let's unpack that a little yeah, bit. I, I, think, I think he should retire because I don't think he has a chance in hell of winning a belt at 55. I know he won the BMF fake gimmick belt against Justin Gaethje. Um, he, he beat Jason Justin Gaethje's ass. Like, yeah. call, us, call it what it is. He beat his ass. Dominated that fight. We know we, he got the extra pub and love because he was. He said, "Let's go right here," and he gave Justin Gaethje a chance, and then had the knockout of the century, which in a fight, which is why people think that UFC 300 was still good when it really wasn't. But <laughs> I mean, I have to be what I have to tell the truth. I mean, I I practice facts over feelings, but I just. I, if he wants to, it's like Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier is at that point. He's like, if I don't have the belt, why am I fighting? Yeah, yeah. Although I think Max just seems to like fighting probably a lot more well, than Dustin. No, I, I I think so. But I think Max wanted to make a run. I think Max's goal is to is to be champion. Um, I think just Makachev being the current boogeyman um the the fight that max had against gaichi was at 55 right yes okay okay so you can see max can take strikes from a 55er because gaichi hits hard um yes. he, he, he ain't no slouch and max went in there and banged with him yes could max outstrike makachev that's the question and if you don't think so then yes that may have been his last chance at a at a title um because if if he if you don't think he can outstrike makachev and beat him at 155 it ain't no way he's going to get a rematch at 45 um and and what is he going to do just fight contenders until he gets another chance I, I don't know like to your point there there may be a situation to where max doesn't really have much of a a, a chance at a title anymore but to say that he should retire i don't know cuz he's young he he's he's young yeah, he's only 32 he's 32 yeah and, you know he's been in the game for a while. He's been in forever. Just, I, that's why I thought he was old. I thought he was older because I'm like, wait, he's only 32 years old. God, damn. no, yeah. He's been fighting since he was 19. I mean, he's been fighting in the UFC since they had like the the custom shorts with like Jack Link's sausage advertising <laughs> on there. You know, like he, he he's yeah. been around. Um, but he he's he's young. Um, it's weird that he's taken so much damage throughout his career and he's still like with it. Um, it's 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 a strange thing to see because he's he's been in some wars. Uh, but he's fun to watch, man. So, like, if he's fun to watch and he seems to enjoy fighting, like, why why should he retire? Um, he's he's good, man. Like when he fought uh, Calvin Cater, right? Um, that that right there was just Max in flow state. He was he, he was on point with every strike that he took. He countered everything that Cater threw at him. He, he basically beat him down to a pulp. And then um, Yair Rodriguez, who was supposed to be the next boogeyman of, of that division, Max took care of him too. Yair went in there throwing all kinds of crazy kicks. Max shut him down. And then Yair didn't throw a single kick after that. Max is a damn good striker. And I, I would hate to see him retire right now. Like, he, he just has so much left to give. Um, 
yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't picture him retiring. But it was sad to I see love, him lose I, that. I way. love what. I love watching him. I love watching Max Holloway fight. I, I, I truly enjoy watching him fight. He's a fun dude. You know, there was a point where I didn't, I, I wanted him to lose of some, when he got the belt for a while, I was like, uh, can we have someone else win? You know, these, these fights are, they're not even, enter, they're not even entertaining because he's, he's just beating these guys up so much with volume. Like his volume <laughs> was so overwhelming. Yeah. It's like, guys, do you guys train? Because this mm -hmm. man is like cardio killing you. Uh, um, by round three type of thing, but looking at this fight with, but then, it, but then after he lost, it was like, I actually went to the fight that he lost against Volkanovski and I was cheering yeah. for against Volkanovski because yeah. I, then I was like, I had a Max Holloway flag. I had all that stuff when I went to mm -hmm. Vegas and I, and I went to that fight, that first one, I thought he won. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm watching from the, from the, from the stands. I thought he won. And then they announced like, he lost. Maybe I missed something on the screen. I don't know. But I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting next to a bunch of people, and we're like, yeah, I think Max Max won that round. And, and we're like, yeah, I, th I think Max won the fight. And then I think the cards were like 50 to 45 across the board or something yeah. like that. They were real bad the other way. And you're like, wait, are we watching the same damn fight? Maybe it was because of the distance. I was on the lower level, so it wasn't like I was on the roof. But then he, he gets that rematch, which I thought he clearly won. Um, against against Volk, I thought he won that fight, and he gets the loss. Uh, was that a, was that a draw? Was another loss? He got a loss there mm -hmm. too. And he's yeah. like, wait, I thought I thought he won that fight. Um, and then but the well, third one, he got he got absolutely pieced. Yeah, the third. Okay, yeah, the third one he is got absolutely pieced. The third one he got absolutely dominated by. Uh, yeah, by Volk. he however, however, he comes back. He has these wins over these different guys. He beats Gaethje. It's funny, earns a 45 title shot by winning a 55 fight. Yeah. And Ilya Toporia, obviously coming off of that big win over Volk, who I know you have opinions about, we'll get to right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I got to tell you, I thought Max was winning that fight. I thought he was controlling the fight. And then he got caught. And yeah. I don't think we've ever seen Max Holloway get caught like that. I mean, that was yeah. shocking. I, I thought if Taporia won, it would be by decision. I, 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 I'm shocked that he stopped him like that. Like looking at Max laid out on the ground, like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, what are your thoughts? I will. I, so you know, Taporia does this thing um, to where some people have like wrongfully uh, compared it to Mike Tyson's peekaboo style, to where he. He he tries to counter his opponents by inviting them to do something to where he can counter it. So he's looking for the counter, but he's forcing his opponents to act in a certain way so then he can counter. And what Max did, he bit into that. So Taporia made, he fainted. Max, I think, threw a counter jab or a straight, I don't remember what it was. And he kind of like shrugged his shoulder a bit and then bam, countered him. And then he just kind of, you know, did it, did uh, it remind uh, you? Let me ask you. Did it, did it remind oh. you of Usman like Bop to Masvidal and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It, it kind of yep. looked like that to me. Okay, very similar, very similar like that. Um, and Max, you know, he bit on the he he bit on this on the trap and he he fell for it unfortunately. Um, uh, but that happens, man. Um, especially when it's against somebody who is fairly new. Taporia hasn't quite been tested. So there isn't much out there for Max to study to get an understanding of, you know, his fighting style, what he does. People just know that the man hits fucking hard, you know, but he, yeah. his fight against Volk, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like he fought, uh, you know, a 75% Volk. That's not the Volk that I saw um, that took apart um, Max the way that he did. That's not the Volk that I saw that almost beat Makachev. Um, you know, that Volk was uh you know beat up after the fight and and he should and he should not have taken that fight on such a short notice i understand you know you're trying to you know get back into the groove of things but it, it wasn't the right thing to do so now you have this guy taporia who who you know knocks out volk and and then tko's max and then now he's being like you know kind of elevated to this pound for pound for pound when i don't think he has quite been 
quite tested yet. There's there's always like a, a situation there to kind of like uh, think about it a bit. Um, he, he won fair and square. I'm not saying he beat Max with any kind of cheating or anything. He won fair and square. But I think had he had a longer reign, had he been a little bit more, spent more time in the spotlight, I think Max would have had an understanding of his fight style a little bit more and would, would have been able to catch on to those little things that he was throwing at him and that he was biting and essentially, you know, creating the loss. I mean, if you look at it, Toporia went from, I don't know if you remember it, when he fought Ryan Hall. And Ryan Hall at the time was beating everybody, you know, with that with his jujitsu. And I mean, he beat everybody with the, with the jujitsu. And then he beats he beats the hell out of Ryan Hall. And then it, two fights later, you know, he, he's fighting Bryce Mitchell. Mm -hmm. He beats him. And then he jumps into Josh Emmett, wins exactly. the decision. And then he gets a title shot with Volk off of a win over Josh Emmett, which I would say was probably faster than maybe he had earned. But mm -hmm. this is the UFC, and it's about who's healthy at the time and ready to fight at that time. Not to mention Volk had pretty much beaten everybody else. So who the hell was left for him to fight? And he, did, I mean, Volk was coming off of being knocked out pretty mm -hmm. much cold by, yep. by Makhachev. You know, but do you think you're going to get a Volk who is back to normal or was that potentially the end of Volk? That's my question because he got knocked out bad in that fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and once you get knocked out, it, you seem to be more susceptible to being knocked out. And I do think Taporia is a sniper. Um he he does give me reminders uh, uh, uh and, I, and I mean he does give me some reminders of Conor McGregor yeah where he's very precise i don't know if he hits yeah. so if he hits so hard or if he's just so damn precise could be a combination mm -hmm. of both but he doesn't cut the weight that Conor cut to fight at 45 so i think he's a real 45 fighter and i just wonder he's only getting i, I mean i don't know it sounds cliche but he might only be getting better. Yeah, and yeah. Who would you have him fight next? Would you have him give a, get a rematch? Give a re See, I'm a I'm an anti automatic rematch guy. I'm anti. I, I don't like him because yeah. you know who sh should have gotten one is Pereira against Izzy. Yeah. Izzy yeah. ran away. Oh, Izzy don't get me started on Izzy that. Izzy ran away. Izzy <laughs> ran away. You know, Izzy gets that. I mean, I'm gonna be blunt. That knockout by Izzy was a fluke, in my opinion. You were you were there. I was there. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a fluke. He was getting pieced up. He wasn't as hurt as he was in round five of their first fight in the UFC, but he was getting pieced and he landed a haymaker from hell mm -hmm. that hit perfectly, I think, right behind the ear. And he shut Pereira's lights out. Now, fight him at oh, I want to see that fight at 205. If we want to talk about fights at 205, he's not doing that. Exactly. Is he not doing that? <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like we talked about in another video, who Alex saving the UFC again. I would want Alex to fight Izzy at in December at 205. And let's see it. Let's see how you do this time. Izzy fighting a guy who's gonna come in weighing 230. Mm -hmm. Not you know, he's not cutting the weight he had to cut. Let's see if you can take that shit now. Now I mean, we already saw it when he fought uh Blahovitz. You know, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah, he didn't I know, do but I, 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 but I mean, I, I think that sells more tickets than uh, sells more pay per view than Mago Medanka Live. I mean, just to me, because is he sure. sells, is he still sells? And um, but I, I just, I just wonder, you know, I'm not, I'm anti auto rematch. Volk has not had to fight again to get a rematch. This whole concept of oh, he deserves it. No, he. Does it? Dana White says you've earned it, then you got it. Okay. Yeah. I don't agree. Because I mean, Sean Strickland had to fight somebody to get another fight with Drikas Duplessis in a fight that we both thought he won. And, and so would you put Taporia against Volk in a rematch, or would you put him against Diego Lopez? Honestly, man, I think Volk needs to take some time off. Um in, injury like that, like not injury, but you get knocked out cold. Honestly, mm -hmm. like from what I hear, never been knocked out cold. And you know, thank God. Yeah. But from what I hear, it takes your your don't your don't, don't get don't get any fight. Don't yeah. 
Don't get in any fight in the street now and get knocked out cold. Okay, I just knocked out. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but from what I hear, it takes your brain at least a year to recover from something like that. Jesus, wow. Um, yeah. yeah. So Volk jumping in uh, right now. Uh, when was when did he get KO'd from uh, Makachev? Um, like er, like he, got KO, he got KO'd by Taporia. Yeah, as well exactly exactly so like volk he, got ko- he got ko'd by volk he got ko'd by volk in october of 23 and then he got ko'd by taporia february 17th 24. he's been ko'd yeah, twice okay. in in 12 months yeah so he needs to chill and i get it like i can tell volk like it's one of those guys who just like need it you know he needs that kind of stimulation to to get going or else he's gonna fall into some kind of depression and stuff I get it, but mm. he needs to heal. Um, so then who 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 do you give to Poria? I mean, I don't know. Um it, it, I, I I don't where is Yaria Rodriguez? I think he would be a good matchup for Taporia. The guy is a wizard on his feet. Um and Taporia is, is a pretty solid striker as well. Uh I haven't seen Yair in a while. I don't know where he's at. I don't know what he's doing. But anybody else, you, you mentioned Brian Ortega. I don't know. No, no, no. I said Diego Lopez. Oh, Diego, Diego Lopez. Lopez. Diego Lopez. Okay. Um, yeah, he, was I, the, I, he, he was the backup fighter to the Max Taporia fight. Yeah. This 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 nonsense goes right back to you know what we were talking about on another video about just like the UFC's just like roster, right? Like they, I I think they stretch themselves thin with all these events and they don't have the roster to back it up because now Ilya can possibly just be sitting there waiting for a, a worthy opponent for. God knows how long because mm-hmm. Volk shouldn't do it. I don't know if they're going to give Max the rematch. So then, who, who, who? who it's Diego, who I mean, to me, it's Diego, to me, it's Diego Lopez. Like that's the only option. I, I mean, you don't have any. If it's not Volk. Well, he just beat the crap out of Brian Ortega. He beat his ass at, at the at the Sphere, that mm-hmm. Sphere card. He yeah, beat yeah. His ass in that fight. I mean, he whooped his ass in that fight. Like that was, and that was after he he fought. And remember, Diego Lopez fought Dan Ige on four hours notice. Yep. Yeah. At UFC, yeah, 30, uh, UFC uh, was it three? Was that the three hundred three card? Yeah, that was three hundred three, mm-hmm. right? So he fought that card. He saved. He, he he helped save the UFC there. Dan Ige helped save him, and that was a great. Ended up being a great fight. Um, obviously, situations you know, you're you know, you're not preparing for that fighter. Blah blah blah, or what have you, but. Yeah, I mean he's won his he's won his last he's won five in a row since he lost his first fight against um Mosvar Evloev, who I believe is fighting um Aljo. He's out he's fighting Aljo in December. But Evloev beat Lopez and Lopez took that fight on like no notice. Yeah. And the first round, Lopez was busting him up, but mm-hmm. then he just kind of gassed, he gassed out um in that fight. Well, that's the thing. Lopez doesn't have that championship experience you know these champions no. five five rounds five fucking minutes that that shit ain't no. easy it doesn't, <laughs> you know it um the, the the only thing that i would say that lopez he 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 has some grappling so and i have yet to see temporia challenged uh from a grappling perspective maybe i missed mm-hmm. it i don't know you tell me no um, I didn't see it. but uh that would be interesting um but the cardio is a concern for me for Lopez. Uh, um, but, you know, no, then cardio, again, yeah, I agree. I agree. Then again, Taporia fights typically don't last that long anyway. So uh, we'll, 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 that, that might be a good option. Um, I, 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 I would like to see it. I think it would be fun to watch. Yeah, years, um, yeah, years lost two straight fights. So you can't look at Yair at this point. He's lost to, he lost to Volk and he got beat up by Ortega. Yeah. So. And, and, and what about Aljo's in 45 now, right? Aljo's fighting against Mozart Evloev on uh, in December, so he's that's already another scheduled. one. He's scheduled, yeah. but I, I I think next year he may make a push for for um the belt. Uh, you I know, think he, he could absolutely. I, I agree. I think he I think he absolutely could, absolutely. And, and that's another one that may give Taporia a run for for his money because he's he's a he's a wizard on on the ground. Um, when yeah. it comes to grappling and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it, it, you know, 45 is up in the air right now. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't think Volk should do it. And I don't know the, the whole rematch thing with Max. I don't think that'll sell any tickets, um, uh, given that it ended in a KO. So Taporia is just going to be chilling for a bit, in my opinion. 
Um, so what's so what's next for Max then? What do we do with Max? Is Max since Max is going to keep fighting, he's obviously going to go fight at fifty five because there's nothing he, left for him to do at forty five. He can't fight at forty five anymore. It's over. He's lost yeah. four title shots at forty five. Like it's a wrap. So yeah, fifty five. Who do you fight? Fifty five is. He's lost to Dustin Poirier. He's lost to Dustin Poirier twice. Poirier yeah. wants one more fight before he retires. He says. Uh, I will tell you this. I wouldn't object to seeing Max fight Conor McGregor. M- McGregor is not coming back. That that he's done. And he keeps I, saying I wish, he is. Like <laughs> no, he's trolling, man. He's trolling. He he said from the beginning of his career, I am here to make money, and I am here to just make as much money as I possibly can, and I am going to leave when I make a lot of money. He said, I am here to set my family up for success, and I will never be in that ring or octagon longer than I need to be. All this nonsense about, oh, I'm coming back. He's trolling. He's just trying to say, now he just wants the attention. I think he's addicted to the attention, but that man is not trying to fight. That man does not well, I have. Think, well, I do think it helps him because he is now a part owner of the BKFC, and I don't know if you've been watching any BKFC stuff. Yeah. But that stuff is off the chain awesome. Yeah, he is I, the, I love it. He is the I'm going to the BKFC fight in December. We covered the one in, in September. I did an interview the other day with uh, the, the BKFC featherweight champion, Kai Stewart. Um, dope guy, really cool guy to talk to. I talked to uh, Alberto Blas, who's the, the champion at 135. Um, there's That's a really exciting sport to watch, and, and, and McGregor is really behind it hard. Um, they're they're promoting it on a high level. They're now going to be on the zone. They're they, they went to Spain. Yeah. They're going to they're doing a lot of things at BKFC. So people haven't been watching BKFC. You need to watch BKFC also. It's it's, it's some it's some good stuff. But oh, I I watch it. If, if, it's if, fun. If, if Conor McGregor is not on the table, and I'm just throwing these out there because this is just this is a hypothetical situation. I think the fight that if you're going to make for Max Holloway is Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker came off is coming off a win. He's ranked sixth. Holloway is ranked fifth at 155. And what timeline? I'm, lo- I'm looking. I'm, huh? What was that? What timeline are you talking about? Like, what timeline? Like, when do you think that fight can happen? Because um, Max is not going to fight any like by the end of this year. Six months. Six months. April. Okay. Because if we're talking April, then maybe feed him to Charles Oliveira. And yeah, that's if Oliveira, because that would be a fight because they had that fight that never really happened. It was a neck yeah. injury that Oliveira had happened or whatever it was. Yeah. It never happened really at 45. That would be another fight, presuming Oliveira beat. Well, see, if Oliveira beats Chandler, then Oliveira might which be he a, will. Which <laughs> <laughs> just, just he, be honest. If he does, then <laughs> if he does, then why would he fight Max, who's coming off of a loss? Fair, um, but it could be one of those like fight for number one contender type shit, you know? Because uh, Oliveira, I don't, I, I mean, he's he's still number two, right, or number three? Yes. Uh, he's number two. So, so Rook is number one, and then Makachev, and they're gonna fight, obviously so, for the belt. So if Oliveira fight uh, beats uh, Chandler, that doesn't mean he's gonna get a title shot because Starkurian's still there, um, right? Yeah. Uh, he's yeah, not yeah, guaranteed it. So he's he's probably has one more fight until he can actually challenge the okay. the the you know the champion, and and listen, I listen, think that... listen listen to these rankings. Listen to you okay. know how Dana White recently said about these rankings are all a mess. Khalil Roundtree goes four rounds and he doesn't move from eight in the yeah. in the in the, in the light heavyweight division, which I thought I agreed was ridiculous. Now apparently he's number six. I guess they did some type of change. I don't know, um, <laughs> but. Saruki is ranked one, Oliveira two, Gaethje three, Poirier four, Max five. Max knocked fucking Gaethje's head off. Yeah. How is he how ranked is... behind Gaethje? <laughs> what? Like, how what is, is the he ranking? ranked behind Gaethje? Like, dude, I don't understand these rankings. They're the most ridiculous shit on earth. Is it like Chandler the, uh, knocked CF- Chandler? Is it like Chandler knocked Hooker's head off, and Chandler's <laughs> ranked behind Hooker? Despite, I mean, like. How do they how do they rank it? Do they have like a committee like CFB? You know, they sit in the room and circle jerk and vote for there's a me- who's there's a me- there's a media there's a there's like an MMA me- there's an MMA media that does this shit. So I I don't know how they come up with it. it it's I mean for Christ's sakes, Patty Plimlet's ranked 14th. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that that would be a funny one. I I wouldn't mind watching Max Holloway fight him. 
That would him sell, a but I don't think uh, Patty can handle his uh, striking. Uh, <laughs> Patty oh, would get can. pieced up. <laughs> That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> you know, because uh, it's just this is an example of like they never. I've been watching this forever, and mm-hmm. I just think the UFC misses the bo- misses the boat now on actual promotion. Yeah, they don't yeah. promote fighters the way they used to promote fighters. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's it's like you mentioned this the circle jerk thing, but that's like Dana White now with with John Jones. Yeah, yeah. Like John yeah. Jones can make Dana White's life miserable forever, and then you can say John, and then Dana White will say John Jones is a piece of garbage. Blah 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 blah. Well, now he's his best friend. Now he loves him eternally. Mm-hmm. But you watch these rankings. These rankings never shift. Like, yeah. I'm a Kobe fan. Kobe Covington's rank still ranks sixth at 170. What? How? 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 He has fought once in like three, two years. Like, how? <laughs> yeah. It, 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 you know, it, the fact that the fact that Johnny Walker is still ranked ninth at light heavyweight. <laughs> how? Yeah. Like it's like it's like Anthony Smith. God love you, bro. Twelfth. Like these guys. Where is the the fighter development? Well, that's what I'm saying. Where's uh Money Moicano? Well, how's he doing? I know he, he's, he's he's still he, ranked tenth. He's okay, still that ranked make sense. tenth. See, that guy should be ranked higher yeah, because then yeah. you would have a fight to set up with him with maybe Max. Yep. That'd be a fire yep. fight because Moicano's gonna yep. throw, mm-hmm. and 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 yet Moicano. Can't get love to move up. I mean, he beats he beat the hell out of Benoit Saint Denis. Yes, so he, he did. He beat he beat Turner after Turner gave the fight away. He beat mm-hmm. Drew Dober. He's won four in a row since losing to Rafael Rafael dos Anjos, who you know that was in 2020 March of 2022. He's won six of his last seven, seven of eight, seven of nine. He's won eight of ten. Like at what point? Are we going to give this guy well, some respect to ranking? Like ben, Benil Dariush. Like, enough already, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you I, know, I'm Rafael, like, Rafael Fiziv is not fighting. He's been injured. No, like, yeah, yeah. Now, that, there's your answer. What to do with Max? I think him and uh, Moicano would be um, that's a, a, good, that's a good fight and a good way to get Max's feet wet in the 155 division. And then he can start yep. fighting, you know, some of the higher-ranked guys. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's crazy that you said he's ranked top five, right? You said top he's five. I'm looking, he's ranked that, fifth. That's insane. Um, <laughs> but you know, if if Max were to actually make a push for the championship, he should fight some of those guys in the 155 division. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's. I don't know. Makachev's just. I don't know. Is he gonna go away any t- at any time soon? Like, is he just gonna sit on that belt? Like, cause. He's the boogeyman right now. He, he's cleared out the division. I don't see anybody he, who can. Has he? No, he hasn't. He hasn't fought everybody. That's my problem. Well, they he's fought the top it. guys. He's fought the top guys. You know, the guys well, who's been dominating still... that division forever. He got. The, he... he got. He got his first title shot not having beaten a top five guy, and that is one of the things that bothers me about this sport is that you give you get a random title shot because you happen to be healthy that particular day. Yeah, like he he does have a he does have a win already over Sarukin. He beat him a number of years ago, but that was probably the toughest fight that Makachev has had outside of when he got knocked out cold in mm-hmm. his one loss. Um, I thought Dustin Poirier. I thought that fight was even going yeah, into round Poirier five. Fight, it was. Good. I thought it was even, but it wasn't. It wasn't according to two cards. If, if I remember correctly, it was there was one card that was even. Let me check real quick, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, because I I believe that it was two two on one card and three one on two cards. Um, but I wanna I wanna I wanna be sure before I say that. Sure. But e- e- let me see here. Official scorecards. Um. Yeah, he was down three one on two cards, so it didn't even matter if that if Poria had won round five because he was gonna lose. I thought the fight was 2-2. Two, two. You know, I had given Poirier rounds two and four, and one judge gave Poirier round two, and only one judge gave him round four. Um, but again, it's like, you know, 
that was a tough fight. I thought I thought Poirier gave him a good fight. I thought he immediately screwed up being taken down. Like you can't get taken down that damn fast. I know it's easier said than done. But and wasn't he going for submissions too? Yes, yes. Like which, come like, on, like stupid. Like stop. Dude. Yeah. Like like what yeah. are you doing? But <laughs> but you look at these. But you look at these guys. Like he's like Islam's never fought Max. He's never fought Dan Hooker. He would. Kill, oh wait, he beat he beat Dan Hooker. He mm-hmm. he beat, he he beat Dan Hooker. He never fought Chandler. Um, the guys that I think could give him. I think Chandler could give him a headache. It sounds stupid, yeah. but he has a wrestling base that could potentially give him a, a, a headache because Oliveira doesn't have a wrestling base. Gaethje's no. Gaethje, Gaethje forgot how to wrestle. Let's stop. Like we, yeah. Gaethje forgot how to wrestle a decade ago. He's a he's a striker. He's been a striker since the World Series of Fighting uh, yeah. with his, his with his slobber knockers against Luis Baboon Palomino. I mean, he's been he's been throwing hands. He doesn't want to wrestle. He wants to throw. And he wants to kick your leg out, but yeah. you know Chandler <laughs> is a guy that has a wrestling base, even though he seems to have abandoned his wrestling. But that's, he has a, I think he's probably better. When 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 was the last time he's used it? Because I, I don't recall seeing Chandler wrestle um, round two, ra- than... round round two versus Dustin Poirier. Oh okay, um, yeah, he won that round. I think people, because I think Volk, they said he has wrestling. Also, I don't know. People should just stop. Stop try- If you see a guy who has that fucking beard and the same haircut, don't wrestle them. You know, you know, just 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 strike with them, man. Like people need to stop saying, "Oh yeah, this guy's a wrestler. He's gonna." T-. Man, any of those Dagestan, like if they've got that <laughs> haircut and the beard, man, don't wrestle them. Just just strike. And there needs to be some super crazy striker that'll go in there and and KO the fuck out of Makachev. That's that's the only way he's gonna get out. Yeah. People need to stop trying to grapple him or if he did if if something happens and he decides to retire early like uh khabib did but that man's gonna just sit there forever unless he's young uh, he's not going anywhere he's young exactly that's what i'm saying so like some the uh, a high high level striker and you can say fazeev is a you know a kind of a high level striker but i don't know he just seems too weak uh because makachev is a strong dude too man he's a strong 55er and i i feel like he wouldn't have the the takedown defense to handle um, Makachev. Fazeev is an outstanding striker, but if Makachev gets those paws on him, he's done. So, like, we need somebody that has some decent takedown defense and and can and is like an elite level striker. Poirier is good, but he only has hands. He doesn't have. He can't kick. Um, yeah. You know, all those other guys they have something that hinders their striking. You don't have like a. Alex Pereira, you know, awesome kickboxer, kickboxer like that guy, or like even an Izzy. If there was a guy like that who had kickboxing skills like Alex Pereira or Izzy in one fifty five, that's the only thing that can, you know. I, beat Makachev I mean, the fight, the, the fight, the fight that I'd like to see Makachev have is against Justin Gaethje, but Gaethje is also getting long in the tooth, and he lost his last fight. So it's like, yeah, you don't, yeah. you, don't you don't get title shots off of losses. Well, unless you're, unless you're Izzy. <laughs> you get multiple Ooh. title shots if you're Izzy. I mean, you get multiple title shots if you're Izzy off of losses. You get if you're if you're uh, you know, there's other guys too. I mean, yeah, you know they get they get lot get, get title shots off of losses. I mean, Kamar Usman got a title shot. I mean, he was a it was a you know it was a rematch, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're, 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 I mean, it wouldn't shock me if they gave you know these guys. They win a bunch of fights and then they're, they're they they've earned a title shot forever. <laughs> like, I don't even like that that um that uh that that uh, uh Duplessis um mm-hmm. fight um yeah. after he beat Izzy like did like what is the goal with Izzy now like that's another one where we're like what are we gonna do with Max what are you gonna do with Izzy is he gonna <laughs> no he's not going there two oh five man that's where it has <laughs> to be. He won't yeah. beat these dudes. Izzy is done. It. Oh, he's done. That's what I'm saying. What, what do you do done. with him? He's done. Like he, he's. It's not there anymore. You, you think? You think they can? You think? What if they match him up against uh, Chimaev, Hamza? Like, what, what's going to happen? Hamza's going to maul him. He's going to maul <laughs> him. He's going to destroy him. He needed. If, if, if Izzy wanted to fight this dude, he needed to fight him three years ago yeah. when Izzy still was mad quick. Was, was 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 when he was different like this like people 
it's it's funny. I mean, Izzy's 35, man. He ain't getting younger. And that's mm-hmm. what kills me is that you, you know, you 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 fought. I know you haven't fought in at, in the UFC or nothing like that, but Mm-mm-mm. you've seen these guys fight. You've seen it all it, like they have it, and then all of a sudden they don't. Yeah, it, it just disappears. It's it's it really just weird. Disappears. Donald Cerrone was killing people. Yeah. Mind you, I'm wearing a cowboy shirt right now, killing people, and then one day he's just getting his ass beat by everybody, and now he says he wants to come back and fight two more times. He said and that. You know what? He did. He oh did. no, no, no. He wants to come. Mm-hmm. Well, he ha- he has fights on his contract that he can still fight. He's done all. He, he's admitted he's doing. He's been doing all his steroids, and um, he's admitted he's done it. But then he still so he <laughs> want he feels better. He, remember, remember what Cowboy used to do. He used to fight five, six times a year. I'm the company yeah. guy. I'm gonna step in. I'm a warrior. Problem mm-hmm. is, being a warrior gets you knocked out at some point. Yeah, it does. Your body can only do so much. Like you're not fighting riffraff in the local fight league in your in in Colorado or New Mexico or whatever. You're fighting at the against the best fighters in the world. And yeah, eventually, like you look at who Cowboy fought. I mean, he fought Leon Edwards, he fought Darren yeah. Till, he fought all these all these bigger dudes than him. And like I came a point where you know when I knew that Cowboy was really done was when Connor knocked him out with his shoulder. The co- Connor, the Connor fight um, with his shoulder. at one seventy. At one seventy, it, it was at one seventy, <laughs> and he knocked him out with his fucking shoulder. Like, yeah, you got. <laughs> and, and and it wasn't. And you know, Stephen A. Smith on first take was like, he quit. I'm like, nah, he didn't quit. He just got knocked out with his yeah. shoulder because his jaw, his chin is gone. It's compromised. Like, yeah, his chin is gone. Like. And it, and it bothered me when you hear a guy like Stephen A. Smith say that because he's so he doesn't have the knowledge, but yet he nah. speaks like he does. But that fight, when because I honestly thought he had a shot to win that fight. I mean, I, I thought he had a shot. He's forty-one years old. Like, what are you doing? Just enjoy your ranch. Enjoy your. Well, ranch. that's what, that's what I was like, saying, man. Some of these guys, they you know they need it, and once they get away from the fight game, they have nothing to kind of replace that adrenaline rush. You know that that makes them feel alive you know the the fear of, of of getting fucked up in the octagon that keeps them going through training and stuff and and all that that's that's you know when that's part of your life for so long and then you just go be a normal person that's that's hard i mean it's he was oh, he, fin- he, he finished oh six and one right he lost to tony ferguson i went to that fight that was stopped by doctor because of his eye and that mm-hmm. was a, that was in Chicago. That was an insane fight. He then gets knocked out by Gaethje, who loved him. They were really, really, you know, he loved Cowboy. And he didn't get pissed off because the referee was letting him beat Cowboy up. And he's mm-hmm. like, stop the damn fight. And then he loses mm-hmm. to Connor via shoulder knockout and in and, and 40 seconds, no less. And it's like, <laughs> no, his chin is gone. And then he loses to Anthony Pettis via decision. I thought he won that fight, I believe. I, I, I thought he won that fight. But then he lo- the Nico Price fight. He lost. It was a yeah. it was a it was a draw. It was a no contest, overturned, majority draw, but because Nico Price had an a point deducted. He mm-hmm. Nico Price won that fight over Donald Cerrone. Like I've seen Nico Price fight. I mean, I watched him when he fought at fight time in Fort Lauderdale. Like he's a tough dude. But he's not a tremendously technical fighter. Um, and then he loses to Morono via TKO. And then he loses to Jim Miller via guillotine. Like, <laughs> can you imagine Donald Trump losing to Jim Miller? Yeah, yeah. Like, God bless. He beat Jim Miller with a head kick in 2014. Like, like he's done. Uh, and then, I mean, yeah, done, maybe the, the steroids are making him feel good. But when he gets yeah. off of them to compete. Yeah. He's gonna yeah. go right back to, you know, just being deflated. He he needs to stay away. But man, I I I I don't know. The one forty five division is 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 really weird. It's up in the air. Um, and as far as Max is concerned, I think he 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 can get a couple of fights at one fifty five and make a push for the championship. Mm-hmm. I just I just don't think he's the guy to beat Makachev though. So I don't know. I don't either. Yeah, I don't know. But anyhow, we're going to wrap this up, man. I appreciate you, Manny. I thank you for your time in, in, in going over these fights. Uh, we're definitely going to do this again because I, I don't enjoy talking to myself on the screen on Combat Corner yeah. all that often. It's, uh, 
you know, I, I make picks. Most of my picks are wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the one sport was like, I picked too much with my heart and not my head. And then, yeah, I'm always wrong. <laughs> and then when I pick well, with my I head, mean, what, and then when I pick what, with my head and not my heart, I'm wrong then too. Cause then the upset yeah. happens. So it's yeah. Like, well, with the fight know. game, man, like the picks, you, know. I, you know, I, I don't really engage in the pick stuff. I, I like to talk more about the, the post fight or maybe, you know, mm. think about what's going to happen in the future, but it's the fight game, man. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. Any anybody yeah. can get fucked up and get caught, you know, and get KO'd and be on the floor sleeping, you know. So yeah. and like, that's and that's where we go back to when we say like you never know. Like you're the ba- you're the baddest man in the planet one day, mm-hmm. and then tomorrow it's like the man's getting not he's chinny, and now he's getting knocked out every time he goes out there. And you're like, what the fuck happened? He yeah. just got caught that one time, and that shit ended it. <laughs> it's yeah. like it just yeah. ended it all. And and that was a uh, cowboy. That's is he right now, in my opinion. But yeah, I still like to see him fight two oh five against. Alex. Nah, yeah. Two or five got folks, too many too many dogs. <laughs> yeah, folks. Uh I have this is Manny Charlemagne with me. Um he is he does train uh Muay Thai fighters. So if you're in the Houston area and you want a trainer uh for Muay Thai fighting, uh you can drop me a message and I'll get it over to him because he'd be ha- I'm sure he'd be look happy to train people because he does that he does fight Muay Thai and trains in Muay Thai and uh you can learn a lot. Didn't you go to Thailand at one point? Yeah, I went to Thailand and trained over there. But honestly, like, even if you just want to get in shape, like, you know, shameless plug. Like, if if you just want to get in shape, just just like hit me up. Like, it's yeah, yeah, for sure. Fun way to uh, to do some cardio. People think it's easy to fight, man. You you go hit a bag for three minutes, and you'll see after thirty seconds how you feel. (laughs) Bro, I I went before we jump off. I went first off. Did you fight Tong Po in in Thailand? Uh uh. It's a joke. Remember uh, the, 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 what was the what was the movie with uh, John Claude Van Damme? Oh, the guy yeah, that was yeah, yeah. The guy that was kicking the the concrete post. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, I went to the Black Zillions gym for to work out. I because there was a mm-hmm. gym along with the MMA MMA gym, and you watch these guys train because at the time it was Usman, um, Alistair Overeem was there. Uh, mm. Michael Johnson, Jason Jackson, Michael Chandler, uh, like Gilbert Burns. You got all these guys that are training there who are elite level guys. And and I watched them kick that heavy bag. Mm-hmm. And I went and I kicked it one time. Mm. That was the last time I kicked that bag. Yeah. I felt like I was kicking a tree. My shin hurt like fuck. And then you yeah. now you know why they're wearing pads over their shins because you have to train your shins mm-hmm. for that type of contact. You can't just go out there like people think. Oh, these guys are kicking. No, man, they're kicking those dudes like that. Sh- your 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 shin must have a callus over oh, yeah. it, developed in training. And people wonder. And that's why I also compare it to football, where I say QBs are getting hurt like crazy because and players get hurt like crazy now. They don't they don't have practice, they don't hit. No, yeah, they, yeah, they, they show don't. them they, they inch and shoulder and shells and and don't touch each other, and then they and show them on the field. Caps. No one can tackle, and when you yeah. do get hit, you get hurt because your body hasn't developed that callus to take that hit. And mm-hmm. that's to me the way I view MMA when I kick that bag. I'm like, and I'm watching this one dude just whack it over and over and over and over and over. Oh my god. Like this guy's shin must be like a. Uh, yeah, yeah. I bought, I bought my shin on the corner of my bed and I fall on the ground. <laughs> now imagine kicking somebody else's knee. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness! It's, it's just like uh, people. The, the general lay person doesn't truly get it. They don't appreciate but, it, and that's what makes this sport so beautiful. When you actually appreciate what they're doing out there, mm-hmm. it's 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 awesome, man. It's it, you know because it's easy when the fans say, "Come on, man, fight through it, fight through." It. Like, do you mm-hmm. understand how much that man's fought through it already? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, do you understand what that man went through just to get here? And yeah, you probably still, you probably still say, and I stayed. I'm like, "Come on, fight through it." Okay, yeah, yeah. We all do. It's just our natural inclination inclination to do that. But like these guys have trained. I mean, when I would watch these dudes train, I'm sitting here. It's like. The worst football practice I ever had did not compare to this. Mm-hmm. The worst, mm-hmm. like like mm-hmm. the worst one where I'm vomiting, did not compare yeah. to this. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, oh my word, he's got. That's when you, we talked about staff infection. Earlier. Yeah, yeah. 
Take and the a, mat is just mat. covered in fucking sweat everywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. But uh, anyhow, man, I appreciate it. I thank you so much. Um, again, everyone, if you are looking for a trainer in uh, in Houston area, you can give me a buzz and I'll connect you with Manny. Uh, I thank you again. And uh, everyone, yeah, next week is the John Jones, Stipe Miacic, uh UFC <laughs> 309. Nice. Who, care, who really cares? I'll watch it, but who the hell really cares? Um, two, geri- <laughs> two geriatrics are going to fight. Yeah, we're looking exactly. forward to catching up on that one, though. I, we, we'll, I, we'll talk about it after, and uh, yeah. we'll talk about it after, and we'll see. Maybe we get shocked, and Stipe Miocic becomes the new champion. And oh uh, my gosh! And then he, <laughs> and then he retires with the belt, and or maybe he shows some sack, and maybe his balls drop, and he says, "I'm going to fight Tom Aspinall." Oh, I'd gosh. appreciate that because I know John yeah. Jones won't do it, but uh, yeah. that's all we got, folks. I appreciate it, man. This is Combat Corner. Come on now.